All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a cloud in a jar. Okay, so we've been talking about weather and, and, and cloud formation and how all that takes place. So we're going to, this is the idea behind this lab is to give you a physical representation on a small scale of how clouds form. So we know that the principles behind cloud formation have to do with things that are taking place in the lower atmosphere. Okay, first of all, in order to have cloud formation, you have to have water. Okay, so water is going to be coming from the environment itself. It's, it's in the air, it's in the plants, it's uh, on the ground, it's coming in, out of the soil, it's evaporating from streams, the ocean, uh, ponds, lakes, those kind of things. So water vapor is naturally in the air. Okay, but there are things that have to take place in order for that water vapor to condense. Okay, so we, we've talked about pressure, okay, high and low pressure. If you recall, high pressure, okay, the air is sinking and is dry, okay? So high, pre high pressure air has low amounts of water vapor. So the air is dry and cool, okay? So that air is sinking, okay? Low pressure air is rising, it's moist, it's warm, okay? So warm air rises and it it's, takes with it the moisture that has, uh, that has filled that air, okay? Well, when it gets up to a certain altitude, okay, that air begins to cool, okay? And those, those water molecules, as they move up where they have been far apart, they begin to, they begin to move closer together. So they are condensing, okay? And so they're forming water vapor, okay, that is just basically sitting there. And that air gets, gets heavy, and then it falls back to the ground as it cools, okay, and then it dries out as it moves further down to the ground. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be demonstrating those processes, how that works, okay, in something as small as a jar, okay. Another thing to understand, just because you have condensation, Okay, condensation is occurring in the atmosphere, okay? But you can have condensation occur and not have clouds. So we have to think about what you have that causes clouds, okay? Clouds are based on the fact that you have what are called condensation nuclei in the atmosphere, which is made up of dust particles, ash, um, other things, pollen, um, anything like that that is in the atmosphere that is something that water droplets can condense around, okay? So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be showing you how that works as well, because particles are anything that are in the environment that water can condense on. So some of the things that you're gonna need for this lab, okay? First of all, you're gonna need a jar, okay? You can use an old mason jar, that will work just fine. Uh, preferably one that has a lid, you need a, probably a metal lid uh, to go on top of it. I don't have a lid, so I'm going to use aluminum foil for mine. Okay, you're also going to need water. And what you're going to do, you're going to be using this water. You will need to heat this water up. You need to heat the water in something like a Pyrex um, measuring cup, something that can withstand heat um, and is not going to crack on you. Because if you, if you were to heat this on the stove, okay, it would cause this, this glass to crack and that would be bad. Um, and then you're going to need some kind of aerosol, okay? Uh, I've got just a small little can of deodorant here. You can use hairspray. You can even use a match, okay, to um, provide the um, condensation nuclei. That's what this is going to be uh, created. So what we're going to do, this is my materials. Um, give me a, we're going to take a few minutes and get do a couple of things here in preparation for the next step and then we'll be right back. All right, so we've got our, our hot water here. You see my uh, beaker, it's steam coming out of the, out of the water there. So we got, we've got active water vapor going on here. Okay, so I'm gonna pour my water into my jar, okay? And immediately you can see the condensation occurring on the wall of the of the jar but 
we don't have a cloud yet. Okay, so I'm going to spray a little of that in there. And then I'm going to put a couple of ice cubes on top of this. And now you can see that we have made a cloud. Okay, so without the condensation nuclei that were made from spraying the deodorant in there, okay, you wouldn't have had that cloud. Now what the ice does, and I forgot to mention that you would need some ice because that's what actually goes on top of your lid to help create the cooling effect. If you didn't have that uh, cooling effect from the ice on top, you would not be able to maintain this cloud. Okay, so it has to have that temperature uh, exchange between the, the heat from the water, okay, which is rising, and then the ice it cools that air, and so it creates a nice circular flow inside this cloud that you have created. Okay, and, but we can, this cloud will maintain for uh, quite a good long time. Okay, so actually, I'm gonna let it sit just a minute or two more. I'm looking to see if you can see any movement of the cloud inside. Sometimes you can actually see the circular currents in the cloud. And some, if you don't get the water too terribly hot, okay, and I may have gotten it a little hotter than I needed, um, but if the water's not too terribly hot, you can actually, it doesn't fog the glass up as much, and you can actually see those currents of the clouds moving around inside there okay so looks like we've got a really nice cloud in there you can't see all the way through so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try a little something here I'm gonna show you something I'm gonna take my ice off here just for a second to make a mess there's the cloud that we've created you see that you can see the air moving all of the uh, the mist there. Okay, we'll put that back on there and put some ice back to it. And if you look, you can actually see a little bit of movement inside the jar there. You can actually see some of that stirring of the vapor. So as it's cooling, it's, that air is moving down and then it's getting pushed back up. So it creates that little convection current that is so important in cloud formation, okay? But this wouldn't happen if it weren't for the condensation nuclei that are found in there. Uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty neat stuff. All right, we'll take our lid off one more time. You can see that vapor coming out of the top of the jar there. So pretty cool. It's pretty neat that you can do these kind of experiments on, on your own and to really actually see exactly what goes on in the atmosphere. We just don't think about this being, it, that it being about it being this simple, but it really is. Um, and that's what makes uh, science so neat because some of this stuff you can actually demonstrate right in the middle of your own kitchen. So there you have it, the easiest lab that you'll do all year. Um, these are the kind of fun things that um, we really like to do because they, they make, they're so easy um, to demonstrate the, the principles that we're trying to uh, learn about here. So hopefully you learn a little something about how clouds work, what causes them to form, uh, the necessity of having not just water vapor in the air, but also having something that water droplets can condense around. Once water joins together with other water droplets, they actually want to hold their shape and they, they hold themselves together really well. So therefore, the more condensation nuclei there are, the better um, those water droplets hold together. And this is one of the reasons why when it rains, those, those water droplets are so tightly held together. 
So uh, you have to have this type of process in order to get precipitation, in order to get fog, in order to get any, any of those kind of things. In fact, when we think about fog, all fog is is a low level cloud. So hopefully we've learned uh, some different concepts and some different principles in this lesson. So now I want you to go do it and I want you to share your results with me. And I will be posting some questions along with your lab that I will want you to answer in addition to actually completing the experiment. So have fun with this and we'll, we hope to see you soon.